Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev to Srila Prabhupada and to all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to uh, Pujapad Sri Bhaktidanta Bhagavad Maharaj, Pujapad Sri Shanta Maharaj, and all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, Panchakov. <laughs> With your permission? Huh? With your permission? You want me to say something? You can say something. Huh? You can say something. Okay. And yeah. if you, uh, you can bless me, I may also say something. Yeah. <laughs> can I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I want to make just a quick announcement. Because um, uh, some a lot of buddies are new, and or we haven't come a lot of temple programs, but we any parking that's not here is not okay. <laughs> So I have a completely empty car. I'm happy to ferry people back from the parking lot a few blocks away. But if everybody has a car um, that's not parked in these four spots, if we can move those down to Main Street and I'll drive you back over. Um, on, on, this, on, this, on the Main Street over here is okay too. And, but on the front of the house, we're not supposed to park there either. So, but I can drive people back so it's only gone for two, three minutes. But um, I apologize, some people didn't know. <laughs> the city's given us a lot of issues. <laughs> All the guilty people walking in. Om Ajnana Timiram Dasya Ganamjana Salakaya Tatsura Nuritanyi Nusasana Smartana So, Prayam Parajan Prabhu very kindly asked me to say just a few words. I don't want to take up much time because tonight we're doing Harinam Sankirtan. And I'm remembering what Srila Gurudev said once about this Harinam Sankirtan. That some devotees asked that Srila Gurudev we're all chanting Nama Bharat. So if we go out on Harinam Sankirtan, then what benefit anyone will get from this Nama Bharat? <laughs> so then Gurudev said, when you go out on the order of Guru, when you're doing Harinam Sankirtan by the order of myself, Swami Maharaj, Prabhupada, all these, when you go out by their order, then it is their Shakti that is carried in your Harinam Sankirtan, their power. He said, therefore, not only everybody else gets purified, but you get more purified. Because you're not chanting Namatara, now you're a conduit for their transcendental vibration. And I was remembering when we used to chant on the streets in New York for hours and hours a day. And when we would come home, people would follow us back to the temple. And they'd come back to the temple and they wouldn't leave. It would just stay. <laughs> that happened to me. <laughs> I heard them chanting, I followed them back to the temple, and I didn't go home. <laughs> so that was Prabhupada. So Prabhupada, Gurudev, Bharti Maharaj, all of them, they have ordered Harinam, very potent. If we do Harinam, we get great benefit. So, very important to do Harinam Sankirtan because you are broadcasting the Prema Bhakti of the Sadhguru. Prema Bhakti Jahavete Amitya Vinashavete. And you are destroying the ignorance and the conditioned souls. So, tonight we're very fortunate because Prem Prayodhan Prabhu will be leading our Harinam Sankirtan. Yeah. <laughs> So I encourage everybody, 
I'm a little bit exhausted and short of breath, so I may not be able to go out, or if I go out, I won't go out for long. So you please forgive me for my incompetence. But if all of you go out, when I was your age, I was going out eight hours a day. <laughs> so you please go join in tonight and go out. I'm having no sense. That is my few words. Now you hear Sri from Frank the causes mercy of Sri Guru and Goranga. Today we are honoring, we are celebrating the divine appearance day of Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur. Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur Ki! Ishwarera Janamati Iti Jehenu Pavitra E Mata Vaishnavera Titira Charitra Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur himself has said that just as the appearance day of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is pure and transcendental. So in the same way, not less, the appearance and disappearance days of pure Vaishnavas have similar titira charitra. That means the glories, glorious quality, qualities and purifying powers. Therefore, it is essential on appearance and disappearance days of Vaishnavas to have a big feast of hearing their qualities. Because in Vedic culture, in Western culture, on your birthday, everyone buys you a present and gives you something. But in Vedic culture, when it's your birthday, you have to give to everyone else. So those who honor the appearance day of Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur, on this day, he will be sprinkling very special mercy to everyone. And see Krishna himself, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, will be so pleased. Sri Krishna said, Mad Bhaktya Puja Vyadika, the service, the worship of my devotee is superior to my worship even. So we'll be discussing more about that later. Why Sadhu Sangha and the service of pure devotees is not only superior to Krishna's worship, but without it there is no worship of Krishna. There is no access to Krishna at all without Vaishnava Kripa. So Vrindavan Das Thakur was born in the year 1507 AD. That's three years before Mahaprabhu accepted the renounced order. His father's name was Vaikuntanath Vipra and his mother's name was Narayani. So Narayani is very famous because she received so much mercy of Nimai Pandits when she was just a little child of about five years old. Once in Navadweep, at first, when Nimai Pandit Mani was performing his Sankirtan in the courtyard of Shiva's Thakur, so many local persons, atheistic Brahmanas, Smarta Brahmanas, Tantrics, logicians and others, they were very much against the Sankirtan movement. They used to criticize. Uh, what are they doing? Hmm? Shouting loudly, screaming the names of... Is their God deaf? Hmm? This is not proper behavior. Don't they know that you should remember the name of God only in your mind? You should not call it out loudly. They said things like this. Others criticized them. They said, what is all this shouting and noise coming from Shiva Sangam in the evening? Maybe they're... They are uh, alluring women there at night and taking drugs and getting drunk and they are having a big party. They weren't allowed inside. They used to threaten, oh, we are all going to get in trouble because of this. Because the Muslim magistrate and his men, they are very, very strict and they won't tolerate any uprising of Hindu nationalism. Hmm? So just on account of their behavior, we'll probably all be punished, the whole village. We should smash down the house of Srivas Thakur and throw it in the Ganges. So they spoke in very derisive waves, 
ways about Shiva's Thakur and, and the Vaishnavas. So one day someone made a rumor that the Muslim king is coming and he's coming with two boats full of soldiers and when he arrives at the village he's going to punish everyone. So there was a very big panic. And all the people of the Mayapur, Navadvip Mayapur, they were packing up their things and they wanted to leave. There was chaos. And at that time, Nimai Pandit, he was chewing some tambu, he was wearing a beautiful flower garland. He was wearing a beautiful flower garland, he was decorated with sandalwood paste and fragrant oil in his hair and he was strolling on the bank of the Ganga in a very relaxed mood. And all the people were panicking, some saw him, they said, who does he think he is? This Nimai, who does he think he is? Is he a prince? Hmm? We're all in trouble now because of him. And he's just casually strolling around. So when they say, who does he think he is? Who does he think he is? Then Nimai Pandit was thinking. Shall I tell them who I am or not? And then he decided, yes, now is the time. And loudly Nimai Pandit began to call, I am he! I am he! And everyone thought, he's gone mad. What is he talking about? In the meantime, Shiva's Thakur, he was in his temple room and he was very concerned about the attacks, the, 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 what he thought was inevitable attack about to take place. And he was sitting before his altar and worshipping Lord Nishingadev. And praying fervently, Oh Lord Nishingadev, please save all the Vaishnavas, save the Vaishnavas. The same relationship that the residents of Navadvip have towards Lord Nishingadev is the same relationship that the bridge buses have towards Giraj Govardhan. So it's not that he is the Ishtadev or Ishtadev of Gaudias, but uh, that is a very sweet relationship. Like bridge buses take share, shelter of Govardhan in a time of difficulty, so Navadvip buses they take shelter of Nishingadev. So he was praying, and Nimai Pandit came and broke open the door to his puja room and said, Srivas! I am he. But Srivasi was not. He was very concerned about worshipping Lord Nishingadev. What is Nimai Pandit doing? No, you don't understand. I am he. That person you are worshipping, Lord Nishingadev, Ramachandra, Narayan, Krishna. Oh, I am he. Srivasi Thakur was not impressed. <laughs> How can it be that the boy who lives next door is the, this supreme personality of Godhead? Hmm? How will he save us from the soldiers? So then Mahaprabhu said, listen, don't worry about anything. Nothing in the universe can move without my desire. I am the Paramatma in everyone's heart. And if I don't want those soldiers to come here, then they cannot come here. Shiva Staku was still not convinced. <laughs> Nemai Pandit said, but just in case they do come here, <laughs> in case they come here, then don't worry, because I'll say to the uh, Muslim leader, I'll tell him, bring your horses, bring your elephants, and bring your soldiers, and bring your priest also, and get him to read from the Quran, and see if he can make them all cry in love of God. And when he does that, and nothing happens, then I will say, Hari I'll make their soldiers cry. I'll make their horses and elephants all will weep with love of God. Srivas Thakur looked at him. He was still not convinced. So then, the Nimai Vishwambar Misha, he saw that he was not convinced. He said, I'll show you. Call your family members. So then Srivas Thakur called all his wives and his um, uh, cousins aunts, uncles, and all their servants, all the family came there. And Nimai Pandit looked around and saw a five-year-old Narayani, little girl. He said, Narayani, come here. He said, Narayani, little girl came forward. Nimai Pandit said, chant the name of Krishna and weep with love of God. And at once, <clears throat> his Kripa Shakti appeared in her, 
and tears began to spray from her eyes and falling and rolling on the ground. She was crying, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Then the my bandit looked at Srivast Thakur. You see? <laughs> Are you convinced now? <laughs> so, actually it was just a rumor the soldiers did not come. But this is how uh, Nimai Pandit, he gave mercy to that girl, Narayani. She was married to the Vaikuntanath Vipra. And, but after her husband died, actually, when her child was very young, and she moved back to live, with, uh, live, to live in the home of Srivas Thakur. So she had so much mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, Narayani, who is she in Krishna Lila? Pornamasi? No. Kalimbika. Kalimbika, yes. Krishna has, of course, Madhya Shoda feeds Krishna breast milk. But sometimes, if she's busy, then Krishna has a wet nurse named Ambika who feeds uh, breast milk to Krishna. So Ambika came in this world as Srivas Thakur's wife, Malini Devi. And Ambika has a younger sister who used to take Krishna's remnants, Kalimbika. So that same Kalimbika from Krishna Lila appeared as Narayani, and Narayani was again doing the same Lila of taking Krishna's remnants, but in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So she gave birth to uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur in Maam Gachi. That is, uh, in the island of Moda Drumadweep, in Navadweep Taham. So Vrindavan Das Thakur, when he was young, he became the recipient of the full mercy of Sri Nityananda Prabhu. He was a disciple of Nityananda Prabhu and empowered by him. And by his mercy, in 1535, two years after the disappearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he uh, completed Sri Chaitanya Mangal. Sri Chaitanya, it was called Sri Chaitanya Mangal at first. But then later, the um, disciple of Narahari Sarkar, Lochandas Thakur, he was only 17, he wrote a poem in some form, Chaitanya Mangal. And then the devotees recognized the Chaitanya Mangal of Sri Vrindavan Das Thakur as Sri Chaitanya Bhagavata. And Sri Kavi Kanapur revealed that it is quite appropriate that his Shastra should be recognized as the Bhagavat of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because Sri Vyasadev, Veda Vyas, in his Samadhi, he received the eternal Shastra Srimad Bhagavatam and manifested in this world. And that very same Veda Vyas appeared as the son of Narayani, as Vrindavan Das Thakur, and did the same service in his samadhi, in his trance. He saw the beautiful pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and manifested the Chaitanya Bhagavat. So, Rabbi Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur, when devotees would first come to the mat, he would recommend that they should study Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. For a number of reasons. First of all, by studying Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, even Muslims, even atheists, they will quickly be, their life will become auspicious and they will attain love of God. And Kusila Krishnaskaraj Goswami has said. And you can understand that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Supreme Lord Sri Krishna himself, and all the avatars come at the time, the avatar Kal, at, at the time of his descent, they enter into him. And he appears with the devotees of all the various avatars as well, appear with him. And he gives mercy that was not available in any other incarnation. But Brindavan Das Thakur, due to his excessive absorption in Nityananda Prabhu, he didn't write. There are many pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he didn't write because he got carried away in remembering Nityananda Prabhu and writing about Nityananda Prabhu's glories. So, because of, due to this reason, Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj, uh, whatever was not written in detail, by Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur, he has elaborated upon that in Chaitanya Charnamrita. And also, uh, the Chaitanya Bhagavad focuses on the Navadip Lila, 
and there's some uh, brief description of the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri, where Sri Chaitanya Charamrita uh, just briefly discusses the Navadip Lila and gives extensive explanation of the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Puri, especially because Srila Raghunath Daska Swami was there in Puri with Mahaprabhu, and Srila Krishna Kavaraj Goswami accepted him as Shiksha Guru and heard everything directly from an eyewitness of Gora Lila. And also, we see that by the time he was writing Chaitanya Tanamrita, Srila Jiva Goswami Pad had elaborately manifested all the conceptions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the form of six Sandarbhas. And so what you find in Chaitanya Tanamrita is the essence of the presentation of the six Sandarbhas is presented in conversational form, uh, in the form of conversations between Mahaprabhu and Rupa Goswami, Mahaprabhu and Sanatana Goswami, Mahaprabhu and Sarvam Bhattacharya, Mahaprabhu and Prakashananda Saraswati, Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Rai, and so on. Mahaprabhu and Swarup Damodar uh, became, you see their discussion is so much of Ujwainila Mani comes in there. And of course, Shikshastakam is there at the end of Chaitanya Taramata. So, Chaitanya Bhagavat is very important for all the devotees for so many reasons. And one of the reasons is, in the Adi Lila, in the Madhi Lila, and the Anti Lila, in several places, Vrindavan Das Thakur says, if anyone will criticize Nityananda Prabhu, or if anyone will criticize Vaishnavas, then I will beat them with a stick in some places, and in other places he said, I'll kick them in the head. <laughs> so, some persons say, well, this is quite, this is extreme. This is religious fanaticism. Huh? But Srila Bhakti stands with Thakur said, no, 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 don't think like that. Why? Because those who are critical, those who are offensive, those who are atheistic, then they should be completely neglected. They're fit to be neglected. They should be neglected by the Madhyam Bhagavatas. Madhyam Bhagavatas, that's very high. From Ruchi up to Bhav, they are Madhyam Bhagavatas. But Srila Brindavan Das Thakur, being an incarnation of Vyasadeva, and also one coward boy of Krishna's, among Krishna's Sakas named Kushamapida, also entered into Brindavan Das Thakur uh, to fulfill some special purposes. So being such a divine being, his vision is not like the Madhyam Bhagavat, but of the Uttam Bhagavat. And he's overflowing with mercy for everyone. So if Brindavan Das Thakur will kick us in the head, that will be so nice. <laughs> because if just some dust from his lotus feet will touch us, then the result will be all misconceptions, all attachments, all anartas, they'll gradually be completely diminished and one will become released from material existence and attain Krishna Prem. So his compassion is causeless. It has no limits. He wants to give mercy to everyone. Now, another one of the important points made again and again by Vrindavan Das Thakur is honoring Vaishnavas and honoring Guru. <coughs> he said, Kahari naninda kare krishna krishna bole ajya chaitanya sai jini ve kahale ninduka na hi kalabya sadha shastra khaye Sabara Samam Bhagavat Dharma Hai. It means, Kahari Naninda Kari Krishna Krishna Bali. Don't criticize anyone and continuously chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Ajaya Chaitanya Sai Jini Veka Hare. Chaitanya Mahapu is Ajay, unconquerable. But if you can just follow these two things, don't criticize, don't minimize, don't belittle any person. And continuously chant Hare Krishna, then Mahaprabhu will be conquered and become your property. Nindukana hmm? Hikalabya. And conversely, those who engage in the criticism or minimization of other persons, they never gain anything in life. Nahikalabya. They never benefit, they gain nothing at all. Uh, because Sabara Saman Bhagavata Dharma 
the Bhagavad Dharma, the transcendental religion which is preached by Srimad Bhagavatam, is Sabara Saman. Respect everyone. Amani na manade na kirtanya sadahari. If we don't honor every living being, then we'll not be aware of the presence of Krishna in their heart. And now we've become vimuk, we've become bahimuk. Our consciousness has turned away from Krishna. So it's a great disaster. Now, honoring everyone is undoubtedly difficult. Hmm? Did anyone ever find that in their life? That there was a situation where they weren't like overwhelmed with fuzzy feelings for everyone they met? What do you think? Huh? Okay, yes, it's difficult. So Brindavan Das Thakur, at the end of Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, he gives a very important pastime to instruct us, to help us all. He's paraphrasing one Leela, which is from 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Once, many rishis, many sages, they gathered together on the bank of the Sarasvati. And they were discussing the meaning of the Vedas. And some of them said, Lord Brahma is supreme. Some of them said Vishnu is supreme. Some of them said Shiva is supreme. And they couldn't decide. So they approached Brigu Rishi. And they said, oh Brigu Rishi, you're most qualified. You're the mind-born Manasaputra, mind born son of Brahma. Please, if you go and do research and then come back with Praman, whatever you give us the conclusion, we'll all accept that. We want to know who is supreme. <coughs> so then Brigu Muni, he set out, and first he went to visit his father, Lord Brahma, in Satyalok. So when a son approaches his father, the, the father should be respected <coughs> in all ways. He should never be disrespected in any way. So the son should bow down and speak sweet words of glorification and serve his father. But Bhrigu Rishi just marched in there, didn't bow down or anything. But Brahma, because he, he's very soft-hearted and had love for his son, he just began to speak to him very sweetly. But when he was speaking, Bhrigu Rishi just was looking in the other direction and ignoring him. So he was making a mental offense. When Brahma saw this, he became inflamed with anger. And he just became so angry, it was as if he was going to incinerate him. But all the demigods came and said, Oh, please be pacified, be peaceful, he's your son, don't be angry with him. And Brahma calmed down. But Brigu Muni, when his father got angry, he quickly ran away. And then he went to Kailash. He went to Lord Shiva. So, Lord Shiva is also his senior, and he should have bowed down to him. But he just came marching in, and Lord Shiva is very kind, very affectionate. So, the juniors, they should not go and embrace their seniors. This is not proper etiquette. Juniors bow down to their seniors, and if senior feels inclined, uh, dis favorably, favorably disposed to them, they can lift them up and embrace them. So, though he didn't bow down, but Lord Shiva is very kind, he went to embrace Brigamuni. Brigamuni say, don't touch me. <laughs> You're covered in ashes. Right? Lord Shiva smeared in ashes from the cremation ground, from dead bodies. He said, don't touch me. You're covered in all this. Where is it written in Shastra that you're supposed to smear ashes from the cremation ground on your body? Hmm? And you have such bad association, all the boot pret and pisat, hmm? all the witches and ghost ghouls and hobgoblins are your associates. Hmm? So don't touch me. You'll, I'll be contaminated. Lord Shiva became ferocious, he grabbed his trident and he was about to kill Brigu Muni. Hmm? Parvati fell at the feet of Lord Shiva. Oh please, don't mm, uh, fight with him. Be, be merciful, be kind to him. You're like his older brother. And, but Brigu Muni, he ran away. He was thinking, Brahma, he, he can't be supreme truth. He's not free from anger. And anger comes from what? Unfulfilled desires. Kam ish kruda esh rajaguna smutva. So, and Lord Shiva is also angry, he's not tolerant, he's not humble. So then, he went to Vaikuntha. There, Lord Narayan, Lord Vishnu was lying down, and Lakshmi Devi was massaging his feet. And Brigamuni, without any introduction, he came running in there, and he kicked Lord Vishnu in the chest. At once, Lord Vishnu got up and paid obeisances to him. And then when he paid obeisances, he came... And with, along with Lachmi Devi, sat him down and he washed his feet and spoke very sweet words to him. He said, 
Oh Brahmin, please forgive me. I, w I did not receive you properly when you arrived. And it may be that your soft foot has become injured by my hard chest. So then Brigo Muni, his hairs were standing on end, tears were flowing from his eyes. This is the Supreme Lord. He has no lust, he has no anger, he, has, he is completely tolerant, he has no touch of any gunas, he is completely Vishuddha. Supreme Lord said, oh, because I have made some offense to you, to remember that, that I am always the servant of the Brahmanas, I will keep your foot dust on my chest. So on the chest of all the Vishnu Tattva, you can see Swana Rekha, this side, and Srivats this side, and next to it, Brigupad, the mark at the foot of Brigu Rishi. So then Brigu Rishi went back to the bank of the Sarasvati, and he told all the sages, Oh, Vishnu, the Vishnu Tattva, that means Krishna, all the Vishnu Tattva, he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now, this history, I think everyone knows. We all know. Right? Everyone heard it before. But Srila Prindam Das Thakur is giving a very beautiful perspective on this. He's saying that Brahma became angry. Is it the fault of Brahma that he became angry? Let's criticize Brahma. Why did he become so angry? He wasn't, didn't make a big offense. Brahma is so bad. Hmm? And what about Shiva? Shiva also. Hmm? Shastra says you should tolerate everything. If someone insults you, they, they're your friend actually. They're helping you. Why did he become so angry? Shiva is so bad. Hmm? And what about Brigu Rishi? He's also bad. Because what kind of behavior is this? Disrespecting his father, disrespecting Shiva, and kicking Lord Vishnu. These are all bad activities. So the teaching in this story is that Brahma is, has faults, Shiva has faults, Brigu Rishi has faults. That's the teaching, right? No. Srila Vrindavan Thakur said that each and every one of them, they are pure devotees. And they were all inspired that the Supreme Lord Himself had entered into the heart of Brigu Rishi and made him disrespect Brahma. That he inspired Brahma to become disturbed by that. He entered into Brigu Rishi and made him disrespect the Shiva and made him disrespect himself even. It was the will of the Supreme Lord in order to, so that the whole world could become auspicious by understanding the loving relationship between the Supreme Lord and his devotee and the superior position of Lord Vishnu, and that Brahma and Shiva are all his servants. Like this. So, Srila Vrindavan Thakur said, it sometimes happens that pure devotees of the Lord behave like ordinary beings of this world. But, if something happens like that, and you criticize anyone, then this is, will completely ruin and destroy your life. So he said, when we're in Vaishnava Sangha, and there's some situation, there's some controversy, there's some argument, or some elevate devotee does something that we can't understand, or they disagree with anyone like this, then this is a very critical point in one's life, and it's also a great opportunity. It's an opportunity for complete self-destruction, but it's also an opportunity to make great advancement. Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, Apichat Sutarachro Bhajate Mamananya Bhak. So Srila Bhakti no Thakur said that if you see a, a person who is dedicated fully to the service of Krishna and you say he is a sadhu, even if there is some discrepancy, then the person who says this, he is the one, Chipram Bhavati Dharma, who quickly becomes Siddha, perfect. He's the one who becomes perfect, very so. So Brindam Das Thakur, he said, these types of situations in life are critical and they're very difficult. But he said, I have thought about this for a long time and I have come across the solution. What is the solution in any difficult situation? He said, the solution is this. Be very calm. Be very humble and glorify both sides. 
This is our nature. When we're in duality, if there's some conflict, we glorify one side and minimize the other. Vrindavan does like, don't do that. When a situation comes, be calm, be patient, and glorify both sides. And if you do that, then... Oh, he said another thing. You should try to hear from advanced devotees also. Listen to the advice and words of advanced devotees. Glorify both sides and wait. And he said, if you do that, then the Supreme Lord in your heart will give you Divyamati. Divyamati means divine intelligence to understand how to proceed with your life. And then you will quickly become perfect. So we're very indebted to Vrindavan Das Thakur. You know, we can learn so many things. We can learn so many things and we can do so much service. Years and years and years of service. But if we don't catch this one point, it will all be for nothing. Because it will be cancelled out by one wrong word. And then we may have to struggle and suffer for lifetimes even. So, we are very indebted to Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur. Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur ki jai, Shriya Abhivati ji ki jai, Go Premanande. Now we want to continue on this theme about the glories of Vaishnava Sangha. So we're going to um, discuss this verse. 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, chapter 20, verse 8. So you can repeat. Yadrichaya matkathado Yadrichaya matkathado Jata sradas tu ya puma Jata sradas tu ya puma sakto Bhakti yoga sa siddhi daha Bhakti yoga sa Krishna is speaking to Uddhav about the eligibility, the adhikar, prerequisite for taking up the path of karma, jnana, and bhakti. So when he comes to describe the prerequisite for taking up the path of bhakti, Krishna spoke this verse. Yadrichaya means by good fortune, Matkathado, jata sradha. If jata sradha, faith, appears in one's heart, in Krishna katha, by good fortune, then yapuman, that person, that yapuman is in the singular. It's in the singular to indicate that so many, many, many persons can have the adhikar to do karma. And less, but also many persons may have the adhikar to do jnana. But those who have the adhikar to do bhakti, they are very rare. So Krishna is telling it in the singular. They are yadrichaya, those who have good fortune. They, they awaken the shraddha, faith, in hearing Krishna katha. Hmm? And those persons, na nirvino, they should be not very disgusted with material existence. Hmm? You know, the jnanis, they're very disgusted with the world. Hmm? And nati, sakto, and they should not be too attached. So not too detached and not too attached to the world. Persons who have such qualification, then bhakti go yogosya siddhida, by practicing bhakti yoga, they will easily attain siddhi, perfection of their life. Hmm? So, what is the meaning? What is the meaning here? The eligibility for jnana is that the chitta has become very purified by the performance of Nishkam Karma Yoga. <coughs> Doing your duties in life, like Bhishma Dev, following all his duties, facing all difficulties, but without any attachment at all, the chitta becomes purified and then one becomes completely averse to worldly activities. So. He is called Nirvinaha. He has eligibility for Jnana Yoga. But Krishna is saying, Na Nirvana, Na Nirvino. Nati Sakto. And he should not be too attached to the world. What is the cause of attachment to the world? Anadi Avidya Yuktasya. Having Avidya, 
ignorance, being covered by ignorance from time without any beginning. That is the cause of attachment to the world. So a person should not be like that also. Because if you are, have uncontrollable lust, anger and greed and everything, then you just won't be able to stop doing sinful activities long enough to chant your rounds. So you should have enough, enough time in the day to do sadhana and not be distracted and the mind contaminated by breaking four negative principles. So what is the cause? The cause of being atisakta, excessively attached, is an adhyavidya. But what is the cause of not being excessively attached, but also not being disgusted? The cause of that is sadhu sangha. So bhakti yoga sasiddha, if a person has sadhu sangha, then they get the eligibility for bhakti yoga. So the bhakti yoga, the sadhu sangha, gives such a samskar in the heart that the devotee easily leaves behind the worldly attachments without becoming disgusted with the world, yukta vairagya. Hmm? And at the same time, by sadhu sangha, jata srada matkathado, the faith comes in harikatha. So this word yadrichaya is very important. It's sometimes translated as somehow or other or by chance, or by good fortune. So, it requires some very minute analysis. When Vasudev Krishna was in the womb of Devaki, at that time all the demigods, they came and they were in the sky, they were offering prayers to the Supreme Lord in the womb. At that time, they said, Swayam samotirya sudustajam dhuman bhavanava Bhimam adabra sauridaha bhavatpadam bauruhu navam atrate nidaya yataha sadhanugraho bhavan. They said, Oh my Lord, when a great devotee, an acharya, who desires to cross over the ocean of material existence, goes beyond this world, he travels beyond this world taking the boat of your lotus feet. But what happens is, if there's a big ocean and someone takes a boat and goes to the other side, then all the people are left behind, they can't cross because he's taken the boat. But the demigods say that the Acharyas, great Vaishnavas, they are so merciful that they take the boat of your lotus feet across the ocean of material existence, but when they arrive there, they leave the boat on the other side, somehow or other. It's quite miraculous. <laughs> so that other people can get in that boat and cross by following in their footsteps. The meaning is that the Acharyas show us the way. And by following them, we can join them and arrive at the transcendental destination. So, Sudustiram Dumam, Bhavanam Bhimam. This ocean of material existence is terrifying. It's very dangerous and it's very difficult to cross. But, by their mercy, one may cross over. Duma means, oh my Lord, you are like the sun. You shine, you're effulgent like the sun. And Sadhanugraha Bhavan means, you, Bhavan, Sadhanugraha, you give your mercy to your pure devotees. Now, the implication, the suggestion of this verse is this. That the Supreme Lord, being like the sun, He's full of joy. He is Satchidananda Surya. Tatsavitur Varanyam. Krishna Surya Sama Maya Haya Andaka. Yahan Krishna Tahan Nahi Maya Adika. Krishna is like the sun. He's full of bliss. So he's not touched by Maya just as there's no darkness in the sun. So, see Krishna not touched by Maya. He does not know what suffering is. He doesn't know what misery is. And so, he he's. He cannot feel mercy for the conditioned souls in this world. Because mercy means that when you are aware of someone's suffering, your heart melts. And when your heart melts, then you express kindness to them. But because Krishna is like the sun and never touched by any darkness of Maya, he does not know what suffering is like at all. And therefore his heart cannot be melted by the plight of the living beings in this world. Yeah? Fact. Nuclear bomb drops. <laughs> 100,000 people die in a second, hmm? right? What, does God intervene? No, nothing. Paramat was there just watching. Everything turns to dust, Paramat was just... 
neutral. Samo ham sava bhuteshu. Nami dvesta usni nabhya. Tsunami comes. Again, 100,000 people die in a second. Brahma is doing nothing. You get locked in your house and it's burning down. You're burning alive. Brahma was just there watching. Samo ham sava bhuteshu. This is a fact. Then who's going to give mercy to us? So the demigods are saying, Sadhanu Braho Bhavan, because the Supreme Lord, his Swarup is made of Swarup Shakti. He only, he never interacts with Maya. He interacts only with his Swarup Shakti. So because that Swarup Shakti in the form of Bhakti is in the heart of his devotees, he only interacts with his devotees in this world. Now the devotees, just like a person who wakes up from a dream, may remember that, oh, in my dream there was some suffering. So a devotee who has become pure and transcendental has a slight memory of what it was like. So when he sees the persons of this world just wondering, lifetime after lifetime, even they may think they're enjoying, but then not everyone is suffering miserably. When he sees, his heart is melting, melting, melting. And that pure devotee gives mercy. So Krishna's mercy never comes directly to anyone. It comes only through Sadhu Sangha. Krishna Bhakti Janma Mul Hoi Sadhu Sangha. So here Sadhu Nugraho Bhavan means Sadhu Nugraho Bhavan, you give Anugraha mercy to your sadhus because they have Swarup Shakti and you are in Swarup Shakti so you interact with them, not with others. You give mercy to them. And Sadhu Nugraho Bhavan means that you, you, you give your mercy through your pure devotees. Yasya prasada bhagavat prasado, yasya prasada nagati kutopi. By the mercy of Gurudev, one gets the mercy of Krishna. Without the mercy of Guru, no one gets anything. No auspicious destination at all. And the third meaning, Sadhanugraho Bhavan, means that the sat, the sadhus, they are your mercy. Karunya Ganaganatvam. Krishna is an ocean of mercy. But the ocean never comes to the desert. But that mercy can evaporate and in the form of a cloud, the cloud may go to the desert and rain down there. So, the cause of the, any, any living entity taking up bhakti and attaining the mercy of Krishna is first and foremost the devotee's mercy. So here the word Yadrichaya, if we take it by good fortune, it becomes a very problematic situation. Because if you say that good fortune is the result of someone did so many pious activities and therefore they got faith in Harikata. So faith, the Harikata is, is bhakti, is transcendental. That would mean that karmic activities would become the cause of bhakti. But bhakti is ahoituki, it's causeless. So how could karmic activities? So if you just say by good fortune, by the good fortune of being pious, then it becomes apasiddhanta. So if you say by good fortune that it was Krishna's mercy on that living entity, then this becomes problematic as well. Because why would God, who is a, a, a impartial, give mercy to one and not to another? And now God becomes guilty of the fault of partiality. So that can't be the answer either. So in Bhakti Sandarbha, Srila Jiva Goswami gives the definition of Yadrichaya. He said, Yadrichaya, Kenapi Parama Swatantra Bhagavad Bhakta Sangha Tad Kripa Jata Mangaludayena. Very beautiful. It means Yadrichaya means Parama Swatantra Bhagavad Bhakta Sangha. The devotees of the Lord are Param Swatantra, supremely independent. They're completely independent. They wander here and there by their own will. And due to their Bhagavad Bhakta Sangha, Tadjata Tadjata Kripa. Tad Kripa Jata, that means by their mercy, Mangaludayena, then there is an awakening of good fortune in your life by their mercy. So I remember I heard that some disciples of Srila Prabhupada said, What did we do in our previous life? What pious activities did we do, Sukriti did we do, to have your association in this life? Srila Prabhupada said, I created your Sukriti. <laughs> he just did it. 
completely independently, just causes mercy of the pure devotee. This is very astonishing. So, therefore, in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter 2, text 16, there is Susur Sro Sardadanasya Vasudeva Kataruchi Sanvayat Sevyavi Prapunya Tirta Nisevanat. That means the scriptures encourage us to go on pilgrimage to visit the holy Tirthas. But the point is that sadhus are there. So if Samharada, you go to the holy Tirtha, but there you meet with sadhus and you serve them, punya tirtha nisevayat, you serve those sadhus, then by their grace they bless you and sraddha comes in Harikatha. Susrusro sadhadanasya vasudeva katha ruchi. So here Krishna is saying, Matkatha do those who by the mercy of pure devotees, and the cause of that mercy was just the pure devotees, their independent will. Mm -hmm. Those who develop faith by their mercy, they easily become Siddha perfect by practicing Bhakti Yoga. Very beautiful. So, Yadrichaya, this word, quite mysterious. In the Amarakosh Sanskrit dictionary, there it says, Yadricha Swairita um, uh, Charita Swairita Charita Iti Amaraha means the definition of Yadrichaya is independent will. The devotees wander here and there as they like. And this we find again and again in Srimad Bhagavatam. For example, in the 11th canto, there it's described that Narad Muni comes to Dwarka. And when he arrives in Dwarka, then Basudev Maharaj greets him. And he honors him. And Basudev Maharaj, he's, he says, please can you explain to me about Bhakti Yoga? Why did Basudev Maharaj raise this question? It's very interesting. Because he told Narad, in my previous life I did austerities to get the Supreme Lord as my son. But I didn't do, but I was bewildered. I didn't ask him for bhakti. You see, Nanda and Yashoda previously were drawn to Andara. They said, I want to love you like my son. So they got to relish all Krishna's childhood pastimes. But Prishni and Sutapa, who was Vasudeva Devaki before, they did hard austerities, which indicates Aishwarya, mood of Aishwarya. And they said, I want you as my son. They didn't ask for bhakti. So they got Krishna as their son for one moment. And then Vasudev Maharaj had to go and leave him somewhere else and come home. Like that. So they got, they got him as their son, but they never had the chance to serve him as he, in, in his childhood as their son. You see? So he said, I was bewildered in my previous life. And because Vasudev Maharaj had heard that the, that the sages, and among the sages, Dorvasa Rishi, had given a curse to the, the Yadu dynasty at Pindarak, so then he knew that very soon Krishna would be leaving this world. So he was thinking, well, Krishna's going to leave this world, but I'll still be here, because I just did austerities to get him as my son, but I never really learned how, in humility, I never really learned how to love him. So he's saying to Narad Muni, please tell me about bhakti. Yeah. So then, Narad Muni, he said, Rishabdev had a hundred sons. Of those hundred sons, uh, 81 of them became first-class Brahmins. Nine of them became Chatriyas and they ruled over the nine islands of Jambudweep. One of them became the emperor of the world, but he renounced everything, went to the forest. That was Bharat Maharaj. Uh, and he became perfect after three lifetimes. So that leaves nine out of a hundred. Those nine all became topmost Paramahamsas. They are the Nava Yogendras. Mm -hmm. Kavi, Havi, Antariksha, Prabuddha, Pipalayan, Avihotra, uh, Drumela, Chamas, and Karabhajan, nine Yogendras. So he said that Upajagmu, Upajagmu Yadrichaya, Upajagmu Yadrichaya. It means that these nine Paramahamsas were wandering here and there throughout the universe. And Yadrichaya, by their free will, they arrived at the Yagya of Maharaj Nimi. Right? And then it becomes very famous, Nav Nimi Nava Yogendra Sangvad, the conversation between King Nimi and the nine Yogendras. 
So there in Shrimad Bhagavatam it's said that the nine Yogendras arrived at the Yagya of Nini Maharaj Yadrichaya. Or by their free will they were wandering. Another example is Maharaj Chittaketu. You know, he wanted to have a son, he was doing yagyas to have a son. He had so many wives, but none of them would give him a son. And then one day, Angira Rishi came there. So it says, Upa Gatschad Yadrichaya, Shukadeva Goswami said. So again and again in Srimad Bhagavatam, you see, whenever a sadhu, whenever a person in this world meets with a sadhu, it's always described Yadrichaya. That is the, just the sweet will the freedom of the sadhu. Now someone may say, well, Krishna's Paramishra, he's the supreme controller. Huh? But actually, Krishna is under the control of his devotees, but the devotee is not under the control of Krishna. This is the Siddhanta. Hmm? <laughs> Krishna himself said, Aham bhakta paradino hyasatantu ivadvija I am not independent. I am dependent on my devotees. I am as Aswatantra. But the devotee, what is that? Paramaswatantra Bhagavad Bhakta Sangha. Supremely independent. Because Bhakti controls Krishna. Yesterday we were discussing that. Dasaishwananya Sharaneshu Yad Atmasattva. Just as the disciple wants to be Atmasat, submissive to the Gurudev, dependent on Gurudev, his heart merged with Gurudev, pervaded with the love of his Gurudev. So in the same way, Krishna is Atmasat. To his devotees. He's dependent on his devotees. He's absorbed in his devotees. He's subordinate to his devotees. He's one in heart with his devotees. So, Lord the Brahma, in the Brahma Stuti, second of the Brahma Stuti, he has also revealed this. He says, Asya pi deva papusa madanu grahasya swecha mayasya nahibhuta mayasya kopi neshei in this verse, Lord Brahma is he just been glorifying the beauty of Krishna's body, you know, with his gunjaberry earrings and his peacock feather, pitamba, with rice in his hand and with his flute and his stick and his buffalo horn bugle. And he is saying, Brahma is saying, oh, you are the only object of worship for everyone. So Krishna is standing there, not really looking at Brahma, taking much notice, but telepathically, he is saying, what do you say? I'm a coward boy, I'm the son of Nanda and Yashoda. I'm just a little boy, you're a big, powerful demigod. So then Lord Brahma says, Asya pi deva vapusa madanu grahasya. Oh my Lord, your body is... Natu Bhuta Mayasukopi is not made of five elements. In fact, Neishe Mahi Twavasitam Manasantarena. Even though my mind, the Manasantarena, is completely restrained, completely focused, but I, Neishe Mahi Twavasitam, I am incapable of estimating the glories of your body, the extent of the power the opulence and the sweetness of your body, my mind just cannot get to the end of it. So the significance here is that yogis, yogis have a power called samapati. When a yogi comes in the stage of mm, <coughs> sampragyata samadhi, and their chitta is very steady, ekagrata, one-pointed, then whatever they focus on, then that very object appears in their chitta, their chitta becomes that object actually, and they fully understand everything about that object directly. So that type of knowledge is not knowledge exactly by pratyaksh, gross pratyaksh, but it's called parapratyaksh, uh, an advanced, subtle perception, and that knowledge is called yogaja, the knowledge born from yoga. So here Brahmaji is saying, even though my mind, manasantarena, is focused, is steady, and I have the power to enter in and understand the qualities of everything, you see, just like a yogi, he'll sit and he'll think about his navel. <coughs> And by doing a samya focus on the navel, then samapati comes and he sees the, his entire digestive system and everything. His chitta transforms into that and he can examine it and then he knows everything and then he can write a book about Ayurveda. Mm -hmm. huh? So knowledge didn't come by, you know, cutting people up and looking what's inside. <laughs> he, by yogaja, he can enter and know the qualities 
of anything. So, but Brahmaji is saying, even though I think about you, I cannot figure out the extent of your qualities. Because your body is so unlimited, transcendental, inconceivable, and beyond my capacity. So Brahmaji here is admitting he has five types of ignorance. He said, Sukhanu Bhute. He said, first of all, I cannot understand the greatness, the power, and sweetness of your body. This is my first ignorance. My second ignorance is that I cannot, uh, if I cannot understand this body of you as a little five-year-old child, then how will I understand your Kishore Leela later when you do Ras Leela and all of these things? It's just completely beyond me. Second ignorance. Third ignorance. I cannot understand. If I cannot understand the glories of your body, then how will I understand Atma Sukhana Bhuti, the joy, the happiness that you feel when you go out into the forest to take your cows to graze in that divine form? It's beyond me. How many ignorances is that? Three. Three. Okay. Fourth ignorance. Here Atma Sukhana Bhuti. Here Atma can mean your Atma are your friends, your associates. So I cannot figure out in my mind what kind of sukh, what kind of ananda, happiness he's felt in the transcendental bodies of your associates, like your coward boys, Madhya Shoda, or the gopis. Because they have divine forms like yours, Satyadananda forms. They're your swarup vaibha, fourth type of ignorance. And then fifth type of ignorance, Brahma says, there's no way at all that I can ever estimate or understand the bliss that you feel when you, in your inconceivable, unlimited, blissful body, and your devotees in their inconceivable, unlimitedly blissful bodies meet together and do pastimes together. Again, can't figure it out. But one thing I know he says about your body. Asyapi deiva vapusa madanugrahasya swachamayasya. Swachamayasya means this body of yours is swachamayasya. It is completely by swa, by your own devotees, they dictate to you everything that you do. Their desires, eh? in other words, why Krishna appears in this world? Because of the desire of his devotee. Why the Vigra appears in this world? Because of the desire of the devotee. How does the holy name descend Shuddhana? Because of the devotee. Eh? How does Krishna appear in the heart of any conditioned soul and liberate him? Because of the prayers of Everything about the body of Krishna transcendental, inconceivable, but one thing is true, that Krishna is not independent. Everything he does is due to the praying, the love of his devotees, because he's praying Vasita, controlled by love. Mm. So this is the thing. So to hear the meaning in this verse, Yadrichaya Matkata Do, by good fortune, if you get faith in Harikata, well, someone may say, but faith is the first step. Ado Sradha, then Sadhu Sangha. But here the word Ado Sradha means, before Sraddha, there was Sadhu Sangha. That Sadhu Sangha was, for you, not conscious choice. It was by the free will of the devotee wandering here and there. Uh, that made your faith. And then when you had that faith, then you deliberately, intentionally, with a strong desire, associated with the Sadhu, in order to learn about the path of Bhakti. Uh, that's the meaning. So, here, the point to take the jewel to keep in your pocket for your whole life is that Krishna is under the control of his devotee, but the devotee is not under the control of Krishna. Krishna does not give mercy directly, he gives through his devotees. And those devotees, by Swetchamayasya, by their free will, they're wandering around the world and distributing Krishna's mercy to everyone. Therefore, the most important thing in our life is Sadhu Sangha. Always. Our first Sadhu Sangha, it was just by their causes mercy. And if another sadhu comes, that's his cause as mercy. But once we have a sadha in Harikata and in sadhus, then no need necessarily to wait for them to come. We should go there. Janana Maranadi Samsara Anala Santapta Pitta Shesha Jalara Shimiva. The Upanishad say, just like a person whose hair is on fire runs to the river to jump in, so anyone who is in this fire of material existence should run to sadhu sangha. Because in that sadhu sangha, then we can get, we can receive something that we can't receive anywhere else. You are not received by listening to recordings, by watching videos, or reading books, even, in sadhu sangha. That is their path, their transcendental mood. 
all the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam, they're filled with praying. And they can only, Bhaktiya Bhagavatam Grajam Nabuja Natatika Lord Shiva said, it, they can, the Shastra can only be understood by one who has love, Bhakti. Na buddhya, not by intelligence, na chatika, and not even by reading the purports, not by reading the commentary. You cannot understand. So unless a person, if Vyasadeva is describing the separation of gopis of Braj, if you don't have separation mood, then when you read it, you will not feel it. Hmm? But the pure Vaishnavas, they have that, that fire of separation. We can give an example. If you're, because it's hot here, but if you live in a country when it's really cold, when it gets cold, just download a video of a fire and sit in front of your iPod and <laughs> warm your hands, right? What will happen? Nothing. Nothing will happen. You have to be by a real fire. So in the same way, the fire of separation is blazing in the hearts of pure devotees. So when we sit and we hear Harikata from them, then we hear the words of Srimad Bhagavatam, but we feel the heat of the fire of gopi separation. Then we can realize the meaning of Srimad Bhagavatam. Huh? Like Raghunath Das Goswami. Atyut katena nitaram virahan alena dandaya manari riyakila kapidasi ha swami nikshanam iha paneena gadam akrandaneena vidura vilapami padyay. Shilo Raghunath Das Goswami is saying Atyut katena nitaram virahan alena dandai I am suffering. I am being punished intensely by a blazing fire of separation. O Swamini, O Shimati Radhika. Kilaka Pidas, who is suffering? He said, oh, just some, a certain maidservant. He's not even saying himself. He's saying, O oh, Radhika, a certain maidservant. He's dying, burning in a fire of separation from you. And, that, and for that reason, Pranayena Gadam, with a deep pranai, feelings of oneness with you, feelings of very intimate and confidential love for you. Vilapami Padhyay, I am offering the flowers of my prayers at your lotus feet. How did that mood come in Raghunath Das Goswami? Only by Sangha. Huh? You can see, first of all, Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri. How he manifested in this world. Aidina Dayadranata He. Mathuranata kadava lokasai hridyam tvada loka kaparam dahita brahmiti kim karomya Radharani's Mathura viraha very intense dibyum mad separation from Krishna when he went to Mathura when Mahaprabhu himself visited Mathura he met one Sanudya Brahman and the, seeing his the ecstasy then he said Oh, how did you get this love for Krishna? He said, oh, once one sadhu came to Mathura named Madhavendra Puri. Mahapu said, yes. <laughs> Without contact with Madhavendra Puri, no one can have even a scent of this type of ecstatic love. Hmm? See, Mahaprabhu went to South India. He came to the bank of Godavari in Kobod, uh, and he met with Ramananda Rai and was inspired. Where did Ramananda Rai get this bar from? Who's the guru of Ramananda Rai? Raghavendra Puri. Raghavendra Puri, and he's a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. So again, it's proven that there's no way anyone in this world can have this ecstatic connection with Radhika's brain unless there's connection with Madhavendra Puri. He's the, he's the seed of the Kevala Madhurya Mai uh, Swarasiki Upasana completely sweet, devoid of any opulences, natural, loving service to Radha and Krishna in Braja. So, then, Mapu heard from Ramananda, right? After his tour of South India, he came back and then he was staying in the Gambira. And then Mahaprabhu in the Gambira, he was with Swarup Damodar, and Swarup Damodar used to see everything, and then, carrying that fire in his heart, he would come back to his ashram, and Raghunath Das Goswami was waiting, and then he heard from the um, Swarup Damodar Goswami. And then that fire was transferred into the heart of Raghunath Das Goswami. So he can write this verse, Atyut Katena Nitram Virahana Lena. Hmm? But all the 
those, especially Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, has relished first. Because you see, when he was in the Gambira, he was chanting loudly, and then suddenly they heard there was no sound coming. So then Govinda he opened the door and Mahaprabhu was gone. He called Swarup Damada and Rai Ramananda. And they were, they were weeping, they thought perhaps Mahaprabhu has become, entered his unmanifest Leela. So they were searching with torches everywhere. And in the end, finally, they came near the Singhadwar of the Jagannath Temple. And they found Mahaprabhu was like a, in his Kurma Roop. He was white like a conch shell, foam was coming from his mouth, tears streaming from his eyes. They picked him up and they carried him back to Gambira and loudly chanted the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And Mapu gradually came back to external consciousness. He said, I was, I was in Vrindavan and I saw Radha and Krishna. And they were with their sakis and they were laughing and their ankle bells were ringing and Krishna was playing his flute and their bangles were ringing and these four sounds mixed together the sound of the ankle bells of Radhika, the flute of Krishna their bangles and their laughter and then suddenly you brought me here Mahaprabhu said Oh Ramananda Rai Sordanda my ears are dying I've become deaf my ears are dying of thirst because I cannot hear this sweet sound of the ankle bells of Radhika and the laughter of the Sakhis. So then you'll see, later, Raghunath Daska Swami is writing. Jai Sisi Radhikovinda Juki Jai. Amritabdi Rasa Prayais Tavanu Pura Sinjitaha Akadama Makalyani Badiryam Mapanasyate Raghunath Das Goswami, in his samadhi, he's hearing the ankle bells of Radhika. But when his spurt is broken, then he's crying, Oh, Radhika, the sound of your ankle bells is like nectar. But now I am a deaf person. Please, cure my deafness by again filling my ears with the nectarian sound of your ankle bells. Where did this barb of Raghunath Das Goswami come from? Mahaprabhu himself was tasting Manjuri Bhav. He was seeing Radhakrishna and the Saki. He said, the Sakis told me, go and pick some flowers. And I went to pick some flowers. So Mahaprabhu himself was tasting Manjuri Bhav. And by associating with Sorabdanda and Raghunath Das Goswami, this Bhav coming in, Raghunath Das Goswami. So this transcendental love, it never falls out the sky, it can never be generated by sadhana can never be attained by anyone. It can only be attained by unconditional nishkapat nishwata guru seva. Without any selfishness, without any duplicity, unconditional surrender and service at the lotus feet of Gurudev, then that treasure, that fire of separation, it comes down and it can manifest in our heart. Then we become siddha. There's no other way to attain the samarpaitum unnata ujwara rasam svabhakti sriyam. This treasure that was never given before of Radha Dasya. So Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastikoi, Lava Mata Sadhu Sangha, Sava Siddhi Hoi. Sri Gurudev Ki Jai, Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai, Jai Gaur Premanande, Sri Labrandam Das Thakur Ki Jai. Okay, quick summary. Why can't you get mercy directly from Krishna? Raise your hand. Or uh, if you don't raise your hand, I'll choose someone randomly. <laughs> you. Yes. Why can't you get Krishna, Krishna's mercy directly? Because the devotees are more merciful. Well, maybe they could give more, maybe Krishna could give less. No, because Krishna is like the sun. And there's no <laughs> maya in the sun. So suffering is maya. So Krishna has no awareness of suffering. And mercy means a melting of the heart when you feel the empathy for someone's suffering. And that's why Krishna cannot give his mercy. He's, he, he's in Galoka Vrindavan playing his flute, dancing with Radharani. He's not thinking, Oh, Jai Dev's there in a <laughs> He's so fried. 
<laughs> he's got to pay his bills, has to catch up on his credit card. Because what do you think Chris is doing? Think he's thinking about this? No, sorry. So the mercy only comes through the devotees. This is the first. I have to summarize, otherwise it seems like someone forgot. Then, next point, what does Yadritchaya mean? Meaning of Yadritchaya? Yes, Prabhu? By their own free will, like they, they choose to give it by, uh, like, causes, like you, you were saying about um, how Prabhupada and he had said he had given the Sukriti. To yes. The, it is the auspiciousness in your life that arises uh, just due to the mercy of the devotees that was just given freely by their free will as they wander the here and there according to their own independent will. Yes, very good. And now, we'll sing one kirtan, then we'll go for Harinam Sankirtan. Mm -hmm. Go to Prima mm -hmm. You have a question? Really quick, the answer. Sure. You said that Krishna's controlled by the love of the devotees mm -hmm. and controlled by the devotees, but then you said that the devotees aren't controlled by Krishna. No. Yes, yes, that's right, yes. Sure. Krishna's controlled by his devotees, yeah. but the devotees are independent. Mm -hmm. So what are they controlled by? Because Yadrichaya is also an adjective to Bhakti. Bhakti Devi herself is independent. Mm -hmm. So Krishna has given complete freedom to Bhakti Devi, and all the devotees there under the control of Bhakti Devi. But Krishna gave complete freedom to her, but her only existence is to give happiness to him. So in this way, all the devotees can give such joy to Krishna that even Krishna is not expecting. Yeah? It's even unexpected to Krishna. Like, Radharani does not just fulfill all the desires of Krishna. Radharani actually creates desires that he, that he never had and then fulfills them. <laughs> you understand? Because she's bhakti in its highest form. It's completely swatan swatantra, independent. That means Krishna is not in control of it. Yet... That bhakti, by nature, by very swarup, only acts to fulfill all his, all his desires, or create desires that he never had to fulfill those also, in the case of Radharani, so she's topmost. Jai Jai Sri Radhe.